Hi, I'm Eric Stern, and that was the inimitable and indomitable Minor Swing by Django Reinhardt. Uh, Django Reinhardt was, of course, the uh, inventor of gypsy jazz, um, Belgian Manouche uh, guitarist, started the, uh, the Hot Club Quintet in uh, 1934 with Stefan Grappelli, and uh, as I say, he's the inventor of a genre you really uh, should delve into it. Um, I'll give you a few pointers and uh, talk about the song itself. Um, and I guess what I want to say is uh, about the genre itself of Gypsy Jazz, um, was it something that uh, was enhanced or came out of the uh, virtuosic music culture that was uh, 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 Django's, Django's Romany heritage? Was it uh, coming just from his mind and his great big open ears and uh, his love of music and, and, and just taking it all in and, and, and spitting it out like a great, uh, great ocean? Um, or was it his collaboration with Stefan Grappelli uh, that began in 1934 and, uh, and continued in the pre-war years? Um, or uh, some combination of, of all of those? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is that what appeals to me about uh, this genre of music is the the swing of it, the way uh, it drives forward, and the very uh, idiomatic uh, uh, way of, of phrasing and melody, um, arpeggios, some of that uh, idiom, or probably all of it, was defined by Django, uh, partially because he, he lost the use of a couple of his fingers in his left hand. Uh, due to fire when he was 18 and I tell you I'm in my 40s and if I, if I lost the use of any of the fingers in the right hand I mean the left hand on the accordion I don't know so much but the right hand uh, I, I think I chuck it all so um, but he persisted so bravo Django well uh, the structure of the song itself it's deceptively simple deceptively simple because it's three chords uh, just like the blues, you know, and like the blues, it allows you to, it allows the soloist to uh, expand over a simple framework, a simple scaffolding. And the scaffolding is A minor, D minor, and E7. Uh, however, the uh, introduction is different than the than the middle of the song than the main part of the song and if you're a newbie to the song that's that's what that's what got me when i was first learning it because you have this introduction <laughs> does that again when the song starts but then once the song is going the, the chords are a little bit different now most people would expect it to do that again but instead it goes The result is, if you're a newbie to the song, just when you think you have it with the introduction and that uh, first melody that, that mimics the introduction, uh, the solos go and, and it's different chords. So check your chords for sure. Um, so what was I doing in this song? I was using some, as I say, idiomatic uh, uh, gypsy jazz structures. For example, I started out, I believe, something like... <laughs> um, so what that is... Uh, there's a lot of minor sixth chords. It just goes along with it. And in fact, you play that in your left hand and you can mimic the rhythm guitar. Rather than do the old Stradella um, rut of a bass that you can get into, uh, I prefer to go. Um, I have those sixths in my, in my left hand just like the rhythm guitar in gypsy jazz guitar. Um, and then, um, uh, and, and then so that looks at, uh, let's look at my right hand. So with that minor, that's an A minor with an F sharp on top. So an A minor six. And what I do is I enclose the notes of that arpeggio, A minor arpeggio. I go above and below it. There's above and below the E. B, D, C. So 
An enclosure is simply when you take a note and you enclose it with other notes. You can start by playing that note and then play below and above it, which is what I did here. Um, you can do, uh, here's, here's one that uh, in a major key. Um, <laughs> That's, uh, you'll, you'll see that a lot in gypsy jazz. Um, uh, interestingly enough, it's in, uh, you see it a lot in bebop as well. Uh, Django and Stefan Grappelli did not, I don't think they really got into bebop or, um, or were interested. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, of course. So, uh, but in gypsy jazz, you have a lot of these enclosures. And I think I did it on the way up as well with a D minor. So here comes my uh, A minor six. <laughs> And then I went something like that. Oh, before I forget, um, I almost did. I'm a decent accordionist, but if you really want to see someone who is a master of this genre with accordion, it's uh, Ludwig Beer. And um, he plays the button accordion. He's Belgian, I believe. And um, my goodness, so fast and beautiful. Uh, it's it's like someone just melted butter all over his accordion. Um, plays, as I say, plays the button accordion, which may be faster than the piano accordion. Um, not sure. Never, never played one, but uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of a, a rivalry. It's it's silly. Once you step out of the genre, you don't know that. But when you're you're in there, um, some some people there's a little rivalry. So, uh, but I don't I don't have any skin in the game. This is just what I learned to play on anyway. Uh, so um, this figure is pretty common. I think it even, speaking of Charlie Parker, I think it, uh, that's how Donna Lee begins. Something like that in another key, in A flat or whatever. Um, I actually, uh, and, and this is, this is something about playing lots of repertoire over time. You find little things in it. Um, I showed that in my last video of Clochard de Paris. You find little things in a song and you're like, oh, I think I'm gonna transfer that to another song. Um, so this actually, comes from Granada. Mi cantare giova fantasia, mi cantare flor de melancolia, che te ho ven. I haven't played it in a long time, but that's where I got it from, and it just fits in the genre. So, and I added, you know, some some passing tones in there. Um, again. In this music it just keeps moving right it, it, it keeps moving never stops um, but speaking of that I also think that you should give your listeners a little break so in the second part of the song oh but before I get to that I think I did it's funny I can play it in the song but then when I'm trying to slow it down to show um, but what that is that is a whole tone scale um, right like um, then he began dreaming that he was playing the red accordion it's that it's that scale they always use in the dreamy parts and radio shows and stuff um, and television and movies uh, so so but the uh, the whole tone scale you can use there's only two of them that's just how it works out on the keyboard and the whole tone scale you can use over the five of of uh, any progression. So c let's say we're in C. Five is uh, the dominant seven is G. So I used it over the uh, E. And I just repeated a pattern. Right? Um, that happens a lot in jazz. You repeat a pattern up. And uh, and so that's the pattern I repeated this. Um, I knew I'd get it right eventually. Okay. Um, so then, when Gypsy Jazz, uh, and by the way, uh, I, I just want to give a shout out because I've learned so much on the bandstand. Now, you can learn this by transcribing listening and transcribing uh and and if the people you play with are nice they'll, they'll teach you stuff too and uh i just shout out to jason flores who i played ba who played bass 
with me for years. He taught me so much, and he, he was willing to sit down and, and show me all this stuff. Um, he makes pickups for uh, guitars and basses and is well-known in the uh, gypsy jazz world for his pickups that he makes. So that's that's plug, and, um, and he has no skin in this game. He didn't pay me to say that. So anyway, um, I like to give the audience a moment to breathe after I've shown some pyrotechnics um, in the beginning. And, and I'm not always about the pyrotechnics, but in gypsy jazz, it's kind of always about the pyrotechnics. So, um, so I think I just went... I wanted to give a little break instead of the... So that's all I did in the second part. Um, but I ended with a... Kind of alluding to the blues, right? Uh, and then I did this little trick. It's stupid, but it works. It's just octaves, right? So you solo over oh, with just going octaves. It can be even chromatically. Hopefully you'll do it with more precision than I do. Uh, and then, and then... I did perhaps in a nod to the uh, the Romani culture. Um, I did some some um, some Romani and um, even Bulgarian accordion stylings. Um, some uh, I won't I won't get into exactly how I do that, but I will tell you the scale, which is. Uh, if you're in Arabic or Turkish uh, Makam world, that's a Hejaz scale. It starts on an E, but since we're in D, I started on the D and then just... And guess what? You can do that with any minor chord. You just play that Hejaz scale. Um, technically, it's Nakriz. Don't worry about it if you don't know what that means. No quarter tones, of course. And then I went and did that back on the A minor. That's going to start on the B. And then I just started on the A because we're in A minor. <laughs> we're really going over to the, uh, the Romy style there. Um... And uh, I believe that's where I ended my solo. So uh, to review, when you're learning minor swing, really pay attention to the structure of the song uh, before you go out there and play it with other people. Um, I started out with some enclosures, and that's where I enclosed the, uh, the notes uh, in the arpeggio. In other words, I would take the chord A minor, and I, uh, A minor six, as it were, and uh, I enclosed the, those notes of that arpeggio um, on the way down and then on the way up, and that's just something you can practice. Um, I used a whole tone scale for the five. Um, then I went and I just wanted to play with some feeling and wanted to give the audience a little break, and so, you know, did just played my own sort of melody, um, and then I did octaves. And then I used some Hijaz scales. And then it was back to the beginning. Once again, I'm Eric Stern. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to support the work that I do, uh, I'll leave some information on the YouTube channel. Um, but I hope you're just enjoying it and learning. Please leave comments. You know, I don't pretend to be an expert about any of this. Uh, I just know what I know and I've learned what I've learned. Uh, I'm happy to learn more. And I'm happy to talk about it uh, again in the comments below. So thank you so much for listening to me play Django Reinhardt's Minor Swing today. And I'll see you next time.